So I'm Paul Raphael, co-founder of Felix and Paul Studios. And I'm Felix Lejeunesse, co-founder of Felix and Paul Studios. So talk about what you guys do. You guys create VR film films. Yeah, so uh, we've uh, basically for the past three years been uh, doing live action, uh, mixed live action CG, uh, and also some real time integration um, of live action uh, VR cinematic storytelling. So we're really focused on story driven content. So we don't produce games. We really focus on you know cinematic storytelling through virtual reality. This is really what we do. You guys talk about the rigs that you do to capture all of that all of that narrative around you because it's simultaneously you talk about the rig and what's on the rig and what kind of cameras you're using sure well you know when we started doing this uh, in about 2012 you know we started of course by getting a bunch of cameras together and figuring out how do you you know get a 360 degree 3d image uh, very quickly we, we realized there were too many limitations in using rigs and we very quickly started designing uh, custom design cameras uh, we're now up to the third iteration of that so you know we're really putting uh, the camera together from scratch, uh, really optimized 100% to get the best possible image uh, without any compromise. It's not a proper rig of cameras per se, it's a single camera with multi-sensors basically. So it's a sort of a proprietary design that we constantly iterate on from production to production. Have you guys seen the film industry evolve as far as VR context? When it started out people were strapping 20 GoPros to like a ball orb and then filming something and fixing it in post, putting it all together in post. We have seen, we have seen a lot of rigs go by. Uh, I mean, I think uh, what's interesting about the studio is that since Felix and myself are artists and creators, uh, as well as you know, kind of overseeing the development of the technology, uh, the, the the cameras and all the all the the whole process is really made hand in hand for the creative so there's no there are no surprises I've seen some camera designs come out and be like right away just by looking at them like wow that they kind of you know missed out on some pretty key uh, principles here uh, and you know having this this sort of constant back and forth this synergistic uh, relationship between the creative and the technology I think is very important at this early stage in the medium where you know unlike film which is kind of reached a state of grace at this point where you can get a camera from there you can do your post somewhere else you can have a production uh, come from somewhere else in the director uh, all these things i think need to be talking to each other much in a much tighter loop right now for things to evolve at, at, the, at, at a decent pace yeah all that he says is true <laughs> so what are some of the challenges when telling a story because when you're traditional filmmaking you have a shot set up and you know what the focal point of that shot's going to be and what the people are going to be seeing, but in VR, they can look anywhere at any time. Uh, you know, honestly, I think uh, if you're coming from a filmmaking background, you're thinking, well, you know, how do I focus the, the, the viewer's attention, losing the frame, losing my ability to edit, uh, to move the camera, all these things. You know, if you distill things back down to the core of what matters, which is to elicit an emotion, and you forget all those things, and then you kind of start thinking, in the real world, how do people behave? How do people know where to look? They kind of naturally know where to look when something important is happening. So it's not actually that that much of a mystery. If the scene is, is well sculpted, well crafted, uh, usually people's attention will go to the right place at the right moment. Yeah, and there's also a big dimension, I mean, in our work and that, that we truly value, which is really framing the context for the viewer's presence inside of the story. That doesn't mean that the viewer is always like a literal character inside of the story, but you need to understand as a VR director and storyteller, you know, what is the meaning of the viewer's presence inside of the story? What is the relation between the viewer and the environment, the viewer and the characters, the viewer and the story, and to sort of thread the story with the viewer in it, if you see what I mean, in one way or another. And it feels to us like one, once that is achieved, you, you, you heighten the sense of presence of the viewer, and therefore the viewer is less worried about missing out on things. You sort of, in the moment, you're experiencing the moment and it just feels right, regardless of where you look. You see what I mean? So that, that's, I think, is a component of, of the process that's important. So talk a little bit about your next project with Circus Olay. Um, yeah, sure. So we're uh, releasing here a project called Ka. So it's our second, uh, what's important, collab creative collaboration with Cirque du Soleil. So we had created the first experience called Curious, uh, and now we're creating a project called Ka. So it's a 30, 13 minute epic uh, piece where you're as a viewer immersed into a world of martial arts. 
and you're constantly moving with the acrobats on sort of gravity-defying platforms through space. And so you're sort of experiencing almost a kind of a zero-G experience in this kind of crazy acrobatic spectacle. And so we're sort of bringing the intimacy of the medium and sort of reconciling that with like larger spectacle and sort of uh, ambitious choreographies and stuff. So I think it's a pretty uh, interesting feast for, for the eyes and for the senses. Do you think VR filmmaking is here to stay and will continue to grow and evolve, or do you think it'll kind of go to the way of 3D? Good for some things, but not for everything. Uh, I definitely don't think it'll go to the way of 3D. Uh, I definitely have, have a vested interest in saying that, but if you look at 3D films, uh, I think there, there were two big issues with that. One, uh, 3D came on top of filmmaking, and very few films actually considered 3D a different medium. It was kind of like, well, it's film, but now it has depth. There are a handful of films that really reconsidered what it meant, what the medium meant now that it had depth, but very few did. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, the, the gain that you did get from having to wear something on your, on your face, so the cost to benefit ratio was not that high, you know? Uh, with a virtual reality headset, yeah, you have to put something on your face, but the gain is so much more uh, dramatic. You know, you can now look in all directions. You actually feel like you've been teleported. Uh, so for relatively the same effort, you're getting so much more. And since the medium is so different from film inherently, we're seeing many, we're seeing much fewer filmmakers or artists kind of just trying to replicate cinema now in VR because it's almost impossible to do that. Uh, you really have to rethink almost every aspect of it. So I think that that combined with the fact that, uh, you know, if you look at almost all the major tech platforms out there, you know, most of them see this as not just the next gaming platform or the next entertainment platform, but as the next computing platform that, that very well may replace almost all of our technology. So uh, all these things combined make me fairly confident that within a couple of years uh, we'll have a very healthy ecosystem. Of, of films, of VR films, and of, of VR everything. I, I approve of that message. <laughs> so for someone who has a HTC Vive or an Oculus or a Samsung Gear, where can they see your films um, and download them to, or buy them to download them and watch them? Uh, so right now, most of the content we've created is available on the Oculus platform, so they can watch it on Oculus Rift and Gear VR. So moving forward, we're going to be releasing our content on all platforms. And so, um, yeah, but I would say for now, viewers can engage with our content through the Oculus platform.